Okay, I was moving my table over here so I could get at this light switch and I, I don't know, I hit it and broke it or something. But anyways, check this out. Have you ever seen anything as crazy as this? This is top of the line for 59. I recently bought this house in a small mill town in central British Columbia, Canada. Now this house was built in 1957. And after I bought it, I learned that they call this a mill house. Now I had no idea what a mill house was, but I quickly started to understand. One of the very first things I learned about this house was that it didn't have lath and plaster walls, which was typical of the era. All the walls are covered with this one by material. Everything from one by six to one by 12, it's everywhere. And you can see that at some point the main panel was updated. I'm guessing 60s, 70s, something like that. They're uh, Siemens QP breakers with a 100 amp service. I'm okay with this for now. Now back to the walls. Now you can see here that the one by material is covered with this door skin. Every room in the house is this door skin with the exception of the living room, which has state of the art trailer park wall paneling. There is not a lick of drywall in this house. Before I get into the switches in detail, I just wanted to show you what I was dealing with here. Now I've never had this plate off. I don't know 100% that this is one of those crazy switches, but the other three or four that I pulled were. So just watch this. Yeah, just as I thought. Isn't that crazy? Wow, the screwdriver I have may be too big. Here, this one's a little smaller. Let's see if this will work. So, oh, look at that. That wire just fell out. I didn't even get to turn that, I don't think. No, I didn't. Wow. That wasn't too dangerous at all. Okay, so here, you. The way you get the wires out of here is you turn the little screws in the front and is that one going to fall out like the other one? There we go. So you saw that wire fall right out of that switch. This is why I'm personally checking every plug, every switch, every fixture in this house. If it's been sitting there for 70 years, something's bound to come loose. If some Yahoo's changed it out, I don't know the quality of his work. I just feel a whole lot better if I replace stuff like these switches, stuff that I'm gonna use on a regular basis and double check all the plugs and the fixtures just to make sure there's no other wires that are sitting there loose and arcing. Now the next thing I want to point out is this gap here. If you watch the next sequence, it'll explain everything. Oh yeah, there's not even a stud there. Is there a stud here? There is no stud there either. What kind of Mickey Mouse bullshit? Okay, I'm going to try to fix this looseness because this is just... <laughs> So what I quickly discovered was that the switch box was not attached to vertical 2x4s on either side of the box. They're actually attached to blocking on the top and the bottom of the box. Uh, this is an easy fix. I can secure the box, but I, I don't know if this would be up to code. We'll see. Seem to have solved the problem. We'll see if I can get the plate on. No, of course this whole process took a lot longer than I was expecting. Getting this new hardware into these old boxes was a bit of a challenge. There's 67 years between technologies here, so it took a little bit of uh, massaging to get them uh, all in. And what I'm putting in here is uh, one of those TP-Link smart switches. And uh, yeah, it wasn't going in without a fight. I had to grab the die grinder and do a little modification. Might be better if you don't watch. Uh oh, it's working. Fantastic. It's like werewolves out there. 
Okay, I absolutely want to make this plate work. Please work. Hmm. Oh, oh, look at that. It works. Woo! All right, that's that. So here the switch is close up. Now, unfortunately, there was no model number or any kind of identifier on the switches themselves. Uh, I'll show you what I did find here. Uh, GEC, uh, General Electric Corporation, made in England. And on the back, there was a, a patent number. Now, I spent a fair amount of time looking up this patent. I could not find anything on this patent. So if any of my UK watchers happen to know anything about this switch or know how to look up this patent number, uh, I'd really be interested to find out more about this switch. And uh, if you want to come out to the shop with me, I have some more silliness to show you here. If you're into electrical, uh, you'll get a kick out of this. When I first looked at this property to buy it, I was really excited to see this Tech 90 cable coming up to a small little breaker panel. I thought, all right, got 220 out to the shop. And then I started looking and it goes everywhere. It goes to the switches. It goes to the plugs. It goes to the lights. It's everywhere. It has taken 220 to the panel, but then they're using it as 110 line to everywhere else. I just thought it was an interesting side note to the video. Okay, one of the main things I need to get fixed in this shop is the lighting. Uh, two of them work, two of them don't. There was some extra bulbs kicking around. I tried them out, they didn't work. I went out and bought these fancy LED eight foot tubes, the T12s, they didn't work either. Two of them are lit up really nice. Two of them don't work at all. So the ballasts, I ordered up ballasts. I'm gonna swap out the ballasts, see if I can get them working. Whew. Holy old school. So check out the original to the uh, replacement. You think that thing's loaded with PCBs and all sorts of toxic chemicals? Good enough for testing. All right. Happy or sad moment. Oh, look at that. That is extremely bright. Holy, it's nice to have that light over here. Okay, now I can take it apart and put it back together. In case you were wondering, yes, I did clean up the wires. For some reason, they were all about three feet longer than I needed, so I cut them up and cleaned everything up. All right, this should be perfect. Oh yeah. And there we go. It's nice and bright in here now. And since it gets dark up here at four o'clock in the afternoon now, there was no way I was going through the winter without light at my woodshed. And in case you were wondering, that's five quarts. And I replaced the outdoor lights as well. It's lit up like a prison yard out here now. All right, this is the darkest corner of my property and this shed only has one little extension cord going to it. So I wasn't gonna hook up a permanent motion light out here. I'm gonna try these solar lights. I had pretty good luck with them at my last place until the batteries died, but uh, I figure if I can get myself through the winter with these, I'll put something a little more permanent next year. Unless they work good, then I'll just leave them up until they don't work no more and swap them out then. And there we go. It lights it up pretty good out here. All right, well, that's it for me. I really wanted to show you guys those switches because I personally have never seen switches like that and I thought they were really interesting. So if you do happen to know anything about those switches, write it down in the comments and let us all know. Uh, for the next video, 
I'm going to get this Kubota D950 up and running. It's got a 7,000 watt generator on the back of it, and apparently it runs. It needs a battery, it needs a fuel tank. So we're going to try to get that going. Uh, my stick welder, that thing probably hasn't ran in three or four years. It's probably a good idea to have that up and running. And I have another piece of equipment coming uh, in the next couple of days that uh, I have not personally seen run. So it'll be like a small engine extravaganza. So come on back, check that one out. I'm going to get out of here because it's freezing cold in here. Thanks again for coming by and we'll see you in the next one.